Hello, welcome to another episode of the Piano Folly Podcast. I'm your co-host Felicia, and here with me is my co-host Audrey. Hi again, Audrey. Hello. Hello again. Um, well, this episode is going to be a fun one. What are we going to do, Felicia? What are we going to talk about? Well, it's kind of a quiz game sort of thing. Not so much quiz, it's just a game of would you rather... Yes, I'm. Um, everybody, everybody knows this game. Like you have two options. Sometimes both are bad. Um, and you just have to find which one it's is like less. Lose, lose. Worse. Which one is less bad? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people who have done this and um, own many like versions, but we try to keep it only music related. Yes. Um, because we are still a music channel anyway. Uh, yeah. So I hope this tortures some of you musicians out there as well. <laughs> as us, maybe. Yeah, maybe you can also join in with the... Like, if you the want questions. to comment on the f- YouTube. Yeah, or mm-hmm. like add more stuff on uh, YouTube. But like... Um, I think like, I don't know... Uh, interactions on spotify is also a thing but i have to check that out uh it's not gonna be as um interactive (laughs) as youtube but for those who are listening on youtube you can participate in either like answer with us together or just like add more chaos add add more torture so torture (laughs) equals chaos right now in this episode i would assume so i would assume so all um, right. Yeah. All so right. So we'll just take turns asking each other. Yeah, we will take turns because um, Felicia is being a good producer of this episode. She already prepared some stuff and she already informed me. I mean, we agreed to prepare stuff, but I have been a headless chicken. Um, <laughs> Listen to our previous episode. Uh, so I will be Your cheating excuse, a You were really I'll busy. Be cheating. I will. I will. I will explain later, but yes, please, yeah. Felicia, if you would start. start this? Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't mind being tortured first. <laughs> so this is very specific to you, Audrey, based on what I know you like. Would you rather collaborate with Eric Nam on an album or would you rather work on a musical with Alex Lacamoire? Alex Lacamoire. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't have to think about that. But this <laughs> the premise of this would you rather is that if you choose one, you will never get to do the other. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> what kind of Here's musical would, you, w- would it be about? What do you think? I don't know. But, <laughs> but I have been wanting to either write a musical or like a concept album that has a, like a storyline mm-hmm. for so long. For mm-hmm. so long. It's a pending wish. Um, not wish, like pending goal um, that I really want to do. And, 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 you know, like Alexa Kamor is great. Um, I think uh, personally, like Eric Nam, like I wouldn't, I don't want to work on an album together with him at, because... Even though his music style uh, fits, I, I like I like his music style. I still think like I don't tend to write the same style mm-hmm. as him. Uh, so I don't want to touch on that too much. You know what I mean? Like I right. would rather listen to his songs and be like, you just want to keep a unknown. distance and just enjoy what you do. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. Because mm-hmm. I think like writing. From writing perspective, it's a lot easier for me to work with uh, Alexa Kamor rather than cool. um, Eric Nam. Sorry okay. to Eric Nam, to Nam Nations, to the fans. Oh, I actually thought I this would be harder for you. You nah, got off easy, easy for the first one then. It's really easy. All right. This is also probably easy for you because mm, okay. it's not catered purely for you, but 
Naya. I just thought of it. Um, would you rather write songs only with like string bass, like electric bass, or only with synthesizer bass? Like you only have those two options. You cannot choose classical. Sorry, I I went rogue here. Popular music direction. Wait, the second one was synthesizer bass. Synth What's bass? the first one again? Like, um. You mean like El acoustic electric style? No, 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 electric, but like with the strings, like the normal E bass, electric guitar bass. Right. Oof. I think. Oh, this is actually pretty hard for me. <laughs> oh, I thought this would be easy peasy for you, right? If well, you had twin like a classical music like instrument, I, that would be much easier. Um, yeah. Because you don't have strong bias for these two, no? I don't have that much strong preference, yeah. But I think I would lean towards the electric. The, uh, like, e-guitar bass. Yeah, e-guitar, e-bass. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Same. Same. Does it surprise you? Mm, not really. Mm -hmm. I think you also, if you go to the, like, popular music side, you also don't go... I mean, I know you play synthesizers. You, I know you have synthesizers and whatnot, but I don't think you would go a bit like more rogue with the. Yeah, like, I, no. you know, like, <laughs> not quite. I, I, um, again, like I, for me, I would also choose the string. Mm hmm. One. Yeah. Cool. Right. Okay. All right. Then the second one, this is uh, probably a little bit mean. I hope it's not too mean. So the premise Throw of this it. is that this is in a single gig. So in a single gig, would you rather not be able to use your index fingers on both hands for the entire gig? Or would you rather have multiple memory sleeps, slips in the gig? Memory slips. Uh-huh. It's like multiple. Again. So like it could be like 50 in a one-hour concert. It has happened already. It has happened already. <laughs> <laughs> has happened and Usually, you survived. Here's, here's, the, here's the thing about memory slips. If I listen to the others playing, I would gain it back pretty quickly after. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I don't mind that. Because it happens quite often. And uh, honestly enough, it's not because of anything other than I just let my muscle memory play mm -hmm. and I don't think about that much about like, oh, what am I going to do after this and whatever. It's, what's the chord after this? It's just like my muscle memory already learned the, mm -hmm. the stuff. Um, and some of the best gigs, in my opinion, that I have had, I don't really remember the gig itself. I just remember feeling good after the gig. Mm hmm so it is. A, it also counts as a memory slip, right? Because like you're just unaware of things. Right. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> the yeah. One for you. That was that. Hopefully the ones be that some you hard thought ones were hard. You the ones that you thought were hard were actually pretty easy for me. What's yeah. Hmm. Maybe I'm just very like, like, tough. Or maybe I don't know you as well as I thought I did. Mm. <gasps> oh. <laughs> There's drama. There's tea. <laughs> is is piano for the podcast breaking up? Nah. That okay. Would. I don't have woods around me. I'm surrounded by metals <laughs> and cushion. <laughs> I mean, there's wood right here. Okay, you'll touch it for me then. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the next, would you rather from me to you, is to perform other people's work for the rest of your life only other people's work you can create your own but not perform it mm -hmm. or only perform your own oh that's quite easy i'll choose the first one perform other people's works for the rest of my life why and hmm? why i think there's just more variety like you know yeah. if if you're composing if I'm composing I'm more likely to stick to like one maybe one style one genre a bit more that kind of thing but that's not that much fun when you're performing you, 
I think it's more fun to be able to perform like, you know, you can go from Bach to like Elton John and everything in yeah. between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I understand what you mean. That was also my uh, my thought behind it was also the same. I would also choose like play other people's song. Because uh, the repertoire, just like it's a broader repertoire. And mm-hmm. also for me, um, even if I eventually become like a famous songwriter or whatever, and if I am not able to uh, play my own stuff, like perform my own stuff, uh, like it's, I don't know, it's just, it just feels very, yeah, it's fine. It's kind of sad, yeah. but it's fine. It's it's kind of sad because like if you have like a great uh, songs or like pieces in your case, mm-hmm. like compositions, you would want to be the one that, that present it to the world. But I also don't mind just being like hiring like a like a band, like a great band, and be like, hey, play this song for me. This is my song, but you you guys perform it for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> if I it's like if I have the power, it's like you still get the creative process out. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, Great. now the third one. Would you rather only be able to loop, listen, your top three favorite artists for the rest of your life, or would would you rather never get to listen to them for the rest of your life, but you get to listen to other music? I I have a caveat to ask about this because yeah. I have to listen to a lot of songs for other jobs, like for teaching and for gigs. Let's am I say, <laughs> let's say for some odd reason. To- uh, I didn't think about that caveat, but let's just twist this about and just say that in this very odd world, mm-hmm. in this very odd world, if you choose the first option, where you mm-hmm. get to listen to the, your top three favorite artists, that mm-hmm. in your job all the music you teach is just from these people and actually it's not true you can teach from other people but you cannot listen to their music um and how am i gonna able to teach them then if i don't listen to them let's pretend you're not (laughs) teaching or performing (laughs) let's I, I would say like not let's pretend that let's pretend that that like maybe like the work related is strictly work related. Just like it's unhinged, like it's un- untouchable. It's like I cannot listen the other songs from the same artist that I was teaching. Let's that's to say that. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So somebody has to unlock that power for me to listen to that yeah. one particular song or to that mm-hmm. one particular version of a song. Yeah. Okay. Um either my three top three artists or uh never again but other artists hmm that's harder that's harder oh, yay. I, think I, I think you know what i think i would as much as this might break my heart i would choose the second one I would choose mm-hmm. the other ones that are not my favorite. Because you know why? Um, it still gives me variety enough to find something that I would like, even though they're not my favorite artists. Mm-hmm. I would still like their songs. Right. Like the variety is kind of what matters as well. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. I would appreciate more variety rather than like looping. Even though I know like I have like some certain songs that I like from my favorite artists that I loop like, like, Endlessly. Till eternally, like endlessly, mm-hmm. like it's just like on repeat, like. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I would I would prefer to have the uh, the variety and finding uh, and genuinely like I think you know this, but not many of people other people out there know this. But like once in a while, I would have this like hit of re- like really new like unknown artists. Like I would just like. Right, like mm-hmm. sometimes I would just like, oh yeah, I found this guy on, I don't know, YouTube on Spotify on, on Instagram, and then I just started like following and like liking their stuff, and they're not my favorite artists, still, but yeah. I really enjoy finding out other people's work as well. Mm-hmm. That's my answer. Cool. 
I think so far it has been like Audrey is all about variety. The more things that she can do, the more that the more likely she would choose that option. Yeah. All right. So the number three, n- the third question for you. This is um, now I'm going broke because, as I said, Felicia was a great producer. She she prepared herself well. Audrey's not. Uh, so I took bamboozle.com. <laughs> Can you please send me the link afterwards for the show notes? For By the way, yes, uh, a decent plug time right here. Um, go to our po- uh, WordPress. Blog, yeah. Pa- yeah. Triple Piano W dot podcast. <laughs> you go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> www.pianofortepodcast.wordpress.com where you can find our show notes, information about stuff that we're doing. And, and our recommendations. Um, our recommendations. Or you can also just go to our um, trusty description box mm-hmm. if you're on YouTube. Yes. If you're on um, Spotify and listening and might be, might be driving at the same time, please do not go to our blog right now. Mm-hmm. Go it, do it afterwards. Okay. Drive safe. Uh, <laughs> right. Would you rather be a famous musician yourself, or bring your favorite famous musician back to life, or if they're already dead, or yeah, I assume they're already dead because you listen to a lot of classical music. <laughs> <laughs> I would choose to bring a dead musician back alive to be to bring you mean (laughs) how do you phrase it how do you phrase it (laughs) would you rather be your uh, a famous musician yourself or yeah bring the famous musician back to life the second one i kind of bring i kind of already guessed that yeah. Yeah, to bring. But I, I <laughs> Yeah. But I think it'll be really interesting also. Like you have all these great composers in the past. Can you imagine if you if like J.S. Bach or like Mozart came back to life yeah. and they have access to the current music? They how would they be feel like, about what that? What is this? What is this? Yeah, I, w- I, w- I wanna see that. I wanna see what that. is this? It has no <laughs> counterpoint. Counterpoint. Yeah. I just yeah. mix language again. Contrapunct and contrapoint. Counterpoint. Ca- counterpoint. <laughs> yes, I just mix language again. I'm, <laughs> it's getting worse. It's getting worse. As the time goes. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, yeah, that was also my thought. That, right? Like, bringing Bach back to life just to be like, he's just like, in a very old German. Can you like, imagine he's like, what happened to the harpsichord? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to harpsichord? What is this? Why do you need electricity to play instruments? What is electricity? What is electricity? <laughs> Where are the horses? What are this Oof. like? Yeah. Silent stuff. <laughs> I mean, like and then electric probably cars. Like, why is they're, it so noisy? they're pretty pretty silent. Yeah. Actually, would that have been noisy? I don't know. Hmm. I don't yeah. have much historical context to go off with, but yes. Yeah, I mean, that is that would be <laughs> that would be quite bamboozling for him. <laughs> yes. Anyway, <laughs> so your fourth round question number four. In kind of a similar vein, but not quite, is mm-hmm. would you rather achieve popularity in your lifetime? but not be remembered after death. Like, no one remembers you, your songs, your works, anything you've done. Or would Mm -hmm. you rather never acquire fame and recognition in your lifetime, but be remembered and loved after you die? Easy. For generations to come. Easy. Mm -hmm. Second one. Mm. Easy. That's easy. What about you? I would probably go for the second one as well. Yeah. I would rather make make an impact for the next time to come. Mm-hmm. 
rather than like having a like a g- okay sure it would be awesome to play like a lot of gigs and whatnot and be famous and play in front of like thousands like crowds uh but um i think like uh i don't know if you've watched this um tick tick boom no it's on netflix it's a uh like a autobiography musical thing mm-hmm. from like a musical writer he, the one that wrote rent mhm he he passed like one day before or like i don't know how long before before rent was premiered and rent was on broadway for like 12 years or 10 years something something like that after that after he passed as one of the like one of the original new sounding musical because before mm. that it was way based on like swing and like the you know yeah almost like classical swing and like olden uh older stuff i guess mm-hmm. um older genres um and like rent was one of the first ones that like influenced with like rock and pop and like more like modern n- like modern as in like the newer 90s, that more contemporary te- uh, sounds 2000s yeah yeah mm. so not non-traditional because it led so much more opportunity for other musicals as well like like Hamilton or for some extent like Hamilton is like it has a lot of rap and like hip hop was not much of a big thing okay in the heights as well but like um it, it's basically lin but <laughs> uh yeah i th- i think it's uh it's two different stories like i mean lin reach fame while he's still alive and i hope it will still continue it will not die after he dies um but yeah it it gives so much more opportunity for other people afterwards mm mm-hmm. mhm Wow, that got deep. Wait, hang on a second. Can you just quickly summarize what is Tick Tick Boom about? About um it's uh Tick Tick Boom is about like the bio- autobiography like the writer himself uh like he musicalized his progress from uh like his debut work which was like it's it did not even touch like Broadway or anything or not even off Broadway it was like mm-hmm. premiered as in like for a performance um and then like it explained how, as in how he was obsessed with this he was uh he w- he it was a really good like set of numbers like music uh but he was very he thought it would hit big directly and it it did not and mm. uh, and then he wrote tick tick boom uh, being desperate about it and like trying to figure things out again mm. yeah so tick tick boom is basically like his revelation work kind of like figuring things out and then he mm-hmm. wrote rent after that and then right, yeah right. rent hit big but just before he died mm okay i see Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tick Tick Boom. If you haven't watched it, pretty good. Really good, actually. Mm-hmm. And the newer version in on Netflix, Netflix, Lin Manuel Miranda also directed it. So <laughs> we we just circle we just circle back to Lin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just circle back to Lin. <laughs> yep. Right. And your oh, is it me now that's asking? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot you know. about it. I forgot about question it. Question number four. Um, would you rather like a genre that everybody hates? So assuming that everybody in this world would hate that genre, just like on that second. Or mm-hmm. um, hate a jo- genre that everybody likes. Everybody including me. 
then you cannot discuss about this to me and like, <laughs> we would break up. I would not like, rather like a genre that everybody dislikes. So you cannot talk about classical music to me, for example. I mean, no one said we can't discuss it. But I would Because hate it. You want to discuss it. But I would hate it. I mean, I'm fine. I think. I think. No, I think. I like the idea of liking something like a genre of music more than disliking a genre of music. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. No, I, what would, I what would like, you do? What would you pick? I would hate the genre that everybody likes. I would do the other way. Because I think even uh, like if I hate it, I I think like I would be able still to find like a good thing or two about it. It's just like I would just hate it. Like I would not listen to it at all. But I would be like, oh yeah, but the production is pretty good, or something. Like that. Yeah. So the thing is, this like I think of all the music I've listened to, there's only one CD that I really, really disliked, and I couldn't find one thing I liked about it at all. Yeah, I, I listened I think to every I'm single a track. Bit more picky. Yeah, I think. So, I think I, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are albums that I have listened and I was just like, not my cup of tea. Even though from like artists that I generally am okay with, it's like uh, yeah. Yeah, but eh. that's also the other thing of like you know if I were to like a genre that everyone else dislikes, the fact that this genre exists means someone else is actually creating work for it. Right, that is true. So Unless are they not dead. everybody else, <laughs> or are they writing dead. something that they hate? <laughs> Which sounds Unless miserable. But honestly, though, I I I know like some tea like um, from listening to other podcasts mm-hmm. out there. You know what is the worst feeling as an artist? What is it? That you write songs, uh, or like you have songs written for you, and that is w- one of your least favorite song, but that is the one that hit so big on the audience. And that it sticks like, and that's all they remember about you. Yeah. N- no, not all the... But like you have to perform that song uh. if you have gigs uh, or tours because that's the song that the audience know you for. for yeah. It, like, and But you just don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you generally yeah. like... It's not your favorite song. It's probably one of your least favorite song that you've ever written. But at some point it was your your the song that you like but it's just not your favorite to perform and they're just like yeah at some point it's just too much too tiring and i was like Mm. yeah i i I could understand that (laughs) i i do actually understand that because this is a little tea as well like with off dreams and nightmares set list fine really fine genre not my favorite but i can live with it but I just dislike one of one of our songs so much just because <laughs> such a long piano intro. I just hate the piano intro actually. I don't hate the song. I hate the piano intro. But if you didn't have to play it, would it be fine? It would. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's probably just like Audrey hates a long piano intro. Audrey's just like, get to it, man. Get to it. Get to it. It's more song. like Audrey doesn't want to play the long piano intro. Yeah, it's not that I hate the song. So, what am I talking about? <laughs> All right, uh, you go again. Is yes. It? So the next one is a kind of a silly one. Would you mm-hmm. rather be stuck with the makeup you do for Odan forever for everything that you do, or would you <laughs> rather never get to play the gyro ever? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In all honesty, I have never played a gyro. Yeah, I know, but if if we're talking about this imaginary world that is not real, (laughs) 
<laughs> that means like you had to walk around with the Odan makeup and for some reason you have no problem with like customs and getting on planes and everything. For whatever reason. Uh, we have to also refer to the photo like maybe of my stage makeup for off yes thanks for the reminder i'll do that in the uh show notes still mm-hmm. hard because i yeah because you have a very heavy I, makeup for odin i do not like that make i like i like it for performing i love it for performing it's so dramatic it's such yeah. a bad b vibe it probably like gets you in the mood as well for the music yeah yeah Mm-hmm. Such it, it it helps so much, but to take it off every night to go to sleep. But in this case, you don't have to butt. take it off because you're stuck with it. Would I get pimples? <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get pimples and like if we if we really think about it, then like, I would just walk around with Odan makeup because it it makes me sometimes be like. You know, guys. You know what? Shut up. <laughs> it makes, oh, it makes feel you feel like good about yourself. It makes you feel good when you have to deal with like tough situations. Mm, yeah, and I think I would like to think that I have more like a, like a. An edge. Cute vibe. Okay. Like I think because of my roundness, like my face is quite round, oh. so I tend to run off as cute but like with that maybe i could add a little bit of more like bite Mm -hmm. maybe um well i could also be feisty though uh i don't know i don't know all of the above i don't i don't don't hate the makeup that much you just dislike having to remove it yeah Eh, okay and putting it on again because putting it on sometimes it's like, like, oh no, this time is not as good as last time. You know what? Let's no. I'm gonna change the question so that you have to take it off every night to go to bed and put it on every morning. <sighs> then I would not play the hero ever. Oh, <laughs> because I just hate putting it on and then putting it, uh, taking it off again. One of the so that is the very okay. Like I hate, like I like washing my face, but like. When you put so much effort into like your gig makeup, mm. I just feel like, oh my god, I don't want to wash this. It's so pretty. Or mm. like, oh my gosh, this is so good. This is a good makeup day. Don't want to wash this. I want to look at it forever. And then you have to wash it. And then it took like mm. seven hundred times to wash it because it's just like black paint. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> if I have to take it off every night. Then I would rather not play the Guiro. Enjoy it from afar. Be like, can you play the Guiro for me? Thank you, please. And if I can live and like sleep with the makeup without getting pimples and whatnot, then I would just live with the makeup. Because I would mm. like to play the Guiro. I so see. that's the case. Okay. I give too many explanations. I think um, you can have explanation for for this one and the next one we just go like, Okay. Lightning round. All right. Question five. Okay. okay, number five for you. Would you rather be in a band that makes, or like orchestra, that makes amazing music, but they're rude to you Aww. and to others, or mediocre, or actually not that good, at most mediocre, but they're very nice. Nice people, I mean. This is very tough. I already know which one. For yourself. Mm-hmm. This is very tough because I'm also... I I feel like, to me, the people matter a lot because they really do make or break an experience. And, like... You know, on one hand, if... So, like... Just by the sound of this, I feel like... Oh, like the people in the mediocre band a bit more. And yeah. if they're nice people and I can communicate with them in the band and outside of the band, then, you know, maybe we could work on like getting better together or something. That's also what I thought. Like, it's a lot easier to right get better on a skill rather than like make somebody that isn't 
yeah. And then on the other a hand, a hole, a a hole, yeah, a great, like nice person. That's but on the other hand, answer. it's also like you know, if you are in an environment where people around you are better than you, it's much easier to get get better, better at your skill on your skill, right? Yeah. So that's also yeah, what's that's giving true. me pause. Also, um, I think it really depends on why are they not being very nice people. <laughs> Oof, we're getting you know? deep again. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe they have trauma. It's a bit unresolved. Like, it's a bit like if. They just hate everyone around them and they treat everyone the same way. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. But if they are very backstabby people, then I'll definitely stay very far away from them. (laughs) Yeah. So I guess... I I can see the argument for both ways. Like I could see people be like, yeah, I would rather play with amazing musicians, but then just like don't hang out with them in real life. Yeah, but it's not very pleasant either because if they're not very pleasant people to yeah, be around then you outside, will not, yeah. then can you imagine during the rehearsal times and everything? It won't be very nice rehearsal. either. Sound check. Sound check is where I feel like rehearsal is fine. Sound check is where the like, it's both, it's like stress sometimes. Like you're in the mm. nick of time or, or like uh, something might not go well or whatever. Like, Imagine having like soundtrack or like dress rehearsal with them, Oof, where d- where the stress is already in the room and they're even causing more stress. Yeah, Do not I want to think I'll that. go with the mediocre, but yeah. great people. Medio, yeah, mediocre skill at best, but great personalities. Mm. All right, so we should probably go speed round right now. Throw a couple okay. more maybe because. Time. Time, yes. Number six. Would you rather only be able to sing songs in German for the rest of your life? Or would you rather mm-hmm. only teach in Bahasa Indonesian no matter where you are in the world? Only sing songs in German. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough music terminology in Indonesian. Ah, That's I I'm see. Thinking. My okay. knowledge is very low. Okay, number six, your turn and also, to ask me. Yeah, varieties of work. I mean, mm. singing. singing songs in German is hard, but like it's it's fine. At some point, it's fine. Um, would you rather watch a complete ring cycle, <laughs> fifteen hours <laughs> in one sitting? Yes. <laughs> oh, one sitting, Audrey. <laughs> or oh. or listen listen to Pekka. Packable's cannon for eight hours straight. Ring. Yeah, I, Ring. I understand that. At understand. least there's a story variety. I can <laughs> a variety drama. rather than yeah. the same the same baseline for like eight hours. <laughs> By the way, this yeah. is another website that's from Classic FM, which is great. They make great stuff <sighs> for classical do, yes. people out there. Okay. Right. Question number. What is this number? Seven. Uh, something language yeah. related for you. What did I write? Would you rather only be able to write songs in German for the rest of your life? <laughs> what is this about German language <laughs> that you just put in just now? Or would you rather not be able to write songs, but you're allowed to translate song lyrics to any languages that is not English? Translate. Because I don't yeah. think I have good German knowledge to write good. And also, yeah, Germans. I'm trying to avoid writing or working music in German. Yeah. Anyway, uh, would you rather listen to Bach mod- modded scored for electric guitars or, uh, or m- like a rock band scored for a chamber choir? Sorry, can you repeat that? I got lost. Would you rather listen to a Bach piece scored for elect, then like played on electric guitars, Mm -hmm. or like a rock band scored for a chamber choir? Hmm. 
Mm, electric guitar. Yeah, I would agree. That would be interesting, yeah. actually. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes, right. I definitely think so. Good. Okay, would you rather be known for writing the best grooves ever? Or would you rather be known for writing the best lyrics? Groove. Mm-hmm. Easy. I'm not Easy. very surprised by that. Groove. <laughs> My lyrics are mediocre at best. Uh, which are, which number is this? Is this seven, eight? Number eight. eight. Okay. You you did your eight just now, right? Yeah. That means that was number eight. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you rather make a ten people ensemble into one instrument, like rearrange that? Okay. Or oh. Arrange from one instrument to like 10 people. The second one, because this is what I'm currently working on. So it's a bit more familiar. Huh. <laughs> I, my, part of my I would actually choose the first one because it's easier. Uh, homework assignment. Because we already do is, that some... Okay. Yeah, is We're to take a piano piece and Sorry. to expand for an uh, orchestra. That's... I have lots right. to learn though. Because that's your homework, but... For me, I would do the other one because that's basically what you do if you are like accompanying a musical people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because it might be like a, a band or like an orchestra, then you'd reduce yeah. it to only piano. Mm. Okay, now number nine. Would you rather. So this is like if you do one, you can't do the other one. Would you rather only teach music for the rest of your life or would you rather only perform music, including recording? For the rest of your life. Only perform or only teach, basically, mm-hmm. that, right? Yeah. Money not Can I still write if I teach but not perform it? I'll put the writing together with the performing music one. Then write and perform. Mm-hmm. No teaching. So the main thing is the uh, writing one, is it? Yeah. Mm. Just I need some creative outlet. Outlet, yeah. Yeah. Would you rather have your audience, like, very scarce of them? Like, you were expecting hundreds of people and then there's only three. Or your band or orchestra or ensemble, like missing half of it what's the second one again like half the people don't missing up? missing half of your band or orchestra the first one yeah same because i think <laughs> at least you can put a good performance stress. yeah if you're missing half too the people stress. there's too much to change yeah, yeah. okay the last question I have on my list. Mm-hmm. Would you rather be proficient in all genres, including traditional music, on the percussion, all percussion, or would you rather mm-hmm. <laughs> only be able to play jazz on the piano but very, very well? Easy. Under percussion, but all genres. I'm a groove girl. Variety, isn't it? Oh, that's true. And variety. <laughs> You could explore and all kinds of grooves and I, genres. I I play the piano. I I like to play the piano. That's my favorite instrument to play because that's also the the instrument that I can play the best. But I, it's I not should my also just add in percussion. Like on the dot excludes all keyboard instruments. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I. I. It's not. It's not my favorite instrument on the dot. Like keyboard instruments. It's not. It's not. All right. So. Um, yeah. What is? Oh, would you rather sight read in this case, like a concert, something? Maybe you're like a sub or something. And the piece is in like six sharp or six flats. Basically, would would you rather read something with sharps or with flats? Because it's six flats. Really? Yeah. Actually, yeah, my m- maybe. Maybe. I, on the piano, I prefer to start read something with six flats. If I'm on a string instrument like guitar or violin, I would prefer to read something six sharps. That's a very diplomatic answer, but all right. But it's true. 
I w- and if you're yeah, on the drum, it doesn't really matter, that. right? So uh, I would take the piano one because you're more of a pianist than a violinist mm. guess, right now. Okay. All right. Then yeah. that's it. We we took a long time for this episode, but it was chaotic <laughs> and fun. And mostly, some of them are really clear and some of them are really like, oof, what's going to happen? The gray zone. It depends on everything else, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, is there other factors that we could change <laughs> that we could think mm-hmm. about maybe? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But all right. Let's wrap this up and um move on to our favorite section the recommendations yes you want to start first first, please oh (laughs) should i is this a surprise episode it's a surprise audrey one yes okay um i kind of want to recommend two songs basically it's from Mm -hmm. the same album the album is called candy pianist it's from uh ijinna it's a korean singer songwriter pianist she's a pianist technically um it's kind of like pop a bit with a bit of like a jazzy touch which audrey based like i i i I do like those kind of stuff uh the first song is called dreamy alarm and Mm -hmm. the second song is called awake um yeah it's it bo- it has different vibe. Dream Alarm is a bit more cheerful and yeah, like I would say cheerful. And Awake is mm-hmm. a little bit more like solemn, like more calming. But s- both are still pretty groovy. And yeah, I I was. It's not a new album. Again, it's like from twenty twenty. It's not that new. It's not that old either. But. I just recently listened to it. So yeah. Hmm. That's my recommendation. Recommendation. What about you? Yes. And mine is a uh, Brahms Symphony. Brahms Symphony number three. The third movement. Mm. Oh. Yeah. The one that you also I did play earlier. it just now. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's very... Oh. It's very lyrical. Mm-hmm. Slightly melancholic. Ooh. Yeah, but very lyrical. And uh, it the melody has also been used in pop. In a popular music world. It has been sampled then. Or just used. Is it sampled or used? The melody is used. Quoted. Quoted then. Quoted. Quoted, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, some examples would be... There's a Frank, there's a Frank Sinatra one. That is, I'll mm-hmm. link the, I'll put the link in the show notes. There's a Frank Sinatra song that's called Take My Love. Mm-hmm. And apparently there's also, I haven't listened to this one. There is a piece by Santana. It's a collaboration actually by Santana and Dave Matthews uh, called mm. Love of My Life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They also use a melody and there's some others, but yeah. But it's a really, really soulful melody. But I think the fact that it's it's used in, like, popular music shows just how, like, timeless it is. Yeah, there's also a lot of, uh, a huge trend right now, either to, like, re-remake, like, re-rendition, make a new rendition of, like, older Mm -hmm. songs, or just, like, plain sampling classical music to, to, like, popular music. Mm. which is more of a k-pop trend right now but but let's have that discussion for another time because it's a big i might have a i might have an opinion on it (laughs) i might i do have (laughs) but (laughs) it's for another time it's fine it's all right it's all right yeah so yep i hope you guys enjoy the chaotic uh episode episode of would you rather I hope you guys feel tortured to a certain degree. Uh, and please join the this topic. And if you want to throw more, would you rather for Questions, us maybe just to, leave yeah, it in us the to pick? <laughs> yeah, at some point. At some point. Yep. We'll probably do it again. All right, then. Mm. Uh, we'll see, see you next, next time. time. And bye. bye.